Let's hear from the Word of God and talk a little bit more about apologetics. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen, for by it our ancestors won God's approval. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are in that are not visible. This is what the Christian believes. This is where we interpret the world around us. And we see exactly what we should expect to see based on what we've read when we read our Bibles. Within the world of apologetics, that is arguing for God's existence, giving a reasoned defense for the Christian faith, there are two basic schools. There's presuppositional apologetics, and then there's evidentialist apologetics. There are some examples of evidentialist apologetics that God uses to bear fruit. Yesterday, we talked about Michael Behe and his argument for irreducible complexity and specific complexity. You can see more uh, on his work with Stephen Meyer's ministry. Meyer is spelled M-E-Y-E-R. Um, today, I want to introduce you to another concept within evidentialist apologetics that I think God uses to bear fruit, and that is the work of William Dembski. Dembski is spelled D-E-M-B-S-K-I. Dembski's writing on intelligent design argues for the probability just the sheer probability that what we observe came about through chance. He's arguing mathematically. It's not as atheist critiques, as atheist critics would say it, arguing from incredulity. He's arguing from mathematical probability. Like what, are the, what is the probability that what we observe would have come about through chance, through chaos? And he posits this against the whole of evolutionary theory. And when you think evolution, don't just think you know, from a, a common ancestry leading to modern day apes and humans, for example. Rather, he's speaking about it from a cosmological point of view as well. Uh, in all of cosmology, like what are the odds? And he literally calculates the odds. And so this is an evidentialist apologetic, but I've seen God use it to put in perspective uh, the foolishness of an atheistic account for a self-generating universe, for example. That same approach is also used in Lee Strobel's books. He, uh, he has a book called The Case for Christ. It's his own personal story about coming to Christ. Uh, but he also had a book called The Case for a Creator, and he kind of comes from the same point of view. And he just comes to this figure, like the odds are like one in uh, one in 10, like trillion, 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 trillion. It, it just, he comes to this staggering figure to calculate the probability of the order we see in the universe. And, and he applies that to the whole of apologetics. Like, whereas the odds that it was all just designed, the order that we observe is here because it was designed, uh, is far more probable. So I don't, I don't always adhere to evidentialist apologetics. In fact, sometimes in my experience, that could lead to these tangents and these rabbit trails that are not gospel-centered. And you end up trying to talk about uh, these dinosaur footprints in limestone instead of talking about Jesus who saves. And the truth be told, when it comes to the age of the universe, Christians are under no obligation to actually answer that. We don't actually have to answer that question. It's really quite arbitrary. The question about the universe's age really came up to try to accommodate the theory of evolution. The, re the only reason we suddenly started describing uh, an age to the earth that's in the millions and billions was not because of carbon-14 dating. Carbon-14 dating is highly erratic. It's been disproven on numerous occasions, such as a uh, living tissue uh, from a living horseshoe crab was submitted for carbon-14 dating, and it came back that it was several million years old. Tissue from a zoo on an exhibit, uh, a penguin in an exhibit was submitted for carbon-14 dating. It was it had to be millions of years old. And then the response to this critique was when the carbon-14 data support our hypothesis, we accept it. When it doesn't, we reject it. That's an inadvertent confession to what we call confirmation bias, meaning we only listen to the evidence that supports what we believe. So to me, the age of the universe is arbitrary. What matters is Jesus. The only person who needs to prove that the universe is any particular age is actually the evolutionist. They necessarily must have a universe that is billions of years old. Darwin's Black Box is another great apologetics resource that, it, that uh, evaluates the utter dearth of evidence for evolutionary theory. What we ought to see if evolution were true is this tree that descends down to common ancestors in the, in the, the fossil record. We don't see that. Instead, what we see is the Cambrian explosion, uh, this, the Cambrian layer in the fossil record 
globe wide that just shows every extant species as we exist today. And it's, uh, it, it's even if I were an atheist, I don't think that I would be totally persuaded by evolutionary theory on these grounds. Dembski just argues that it's highly improbable that these things came about through chance. These are tools from the beginning of the apologetics discussion that you can use. Okay, Dembski, Behe, uh, Lee Strobel, Stephen Meyer, any resources you read by these guys are excellent for that level of the discussion. But remember, it comes down to this. By faith, we believe that the universe was created at God's command so that what is seen was created by the one who is unseen. I'm a presuppositional uh, apologist, but I don't want to throw out evidentialist apologetics with the bathwater. All right, God uses those people to share the gospel and leads them ultimately to faith in Christ. So man, if it's bearing fruit, don't cut it down. This is just a primer on basic apologetics. I want you to read more for yourself. Read Behe, read Dembski, read Stephen Meyer, and also for, for more like uh, middle shelf kind of resources, read Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Christ and The Case for a Creator. This is apologetics, man. It's a rich field and it's great for study. I want to encourage you to remember we use apologetics as evangelists and we measure an, effect, uh, an effective apologetic method based on the evangelistic fruit that it bears. So take these tools and use them to lead in uh, discussions with people who are far from Christ that leads to the gospel. Are you ready? Go.